Greetings and salutations, travelers of the internet. Welcome to the Lit Round Table. I'm Joseph. And I'm Anna. We'll be your wise or not so wise mentors for today's audio adventure into all things storytelling. And today, we finally get to talk about all the stuff we've been watching that we haven't been able to talk about for months. Finally. Yeah. Um, before we get into all that goodness, just a reminder that our read-along for the fifth season is currently ongoing. It's very good. You should read it. Um, and you should join along. And also our Patreon is available if you would like extra content. Mm -hmm. And if you want voting rights for the read-alongs, um, the read-along will be coming, like the new one, um, the voting rights will be coming out soon. So not like real wow. soon. But Christmas goes fast, y'all. Yep. It sure <laughs> um, do. That season goes by super fast. So anyway... Hopefully you can join us over there and get some sweet extra content and voting rights. Um, and also like and subscribe, do the thing, you know, that we don't like asking for. But it does help. So we appreciate yes. that. Yes. Yes. The shameless plug. Are the we done with the shameless plug. plugs? We are. We are. All right. Okay. So let's talk about, um, let's talk about the strikes that are finally over. Sort of. Um, the WGA strike is officially done and has been done for a while now um mm -hmm. the uh i don't know all the correct terminology but my understanding is that the like board that was negotiating um with the ampta was a unanimous 100 percent before they put it to the um, members for ratification the sag after strike was not 100%, but it was like 87%. Okay. Um, and it's pretty hefty. And members are still voting on that, if I am correct. But hopefully by the time this comes out, that be will settled. be done and ratified. Nice. If not, oops. <laughs> but I, they wouldn't have put it to the members if they didn't feel confident. So. Yeah. Yeah. Um, cool. I will put a link to all the things like describing what was like what um what was like, accomplished what was a thank you what, I was trying yeah what was agreement mm, that's not the right word what was, <laughs> what was agreed on yeah <laughs> yes what was agreed on what was accomplished it's very dense um, okay but it's not Le legal terms I'm sure yeah yeah um, so there's a lot out in there. And highly encourage you to go out and read it. Some people have been putting together infographics, which are really helpful. But um, I know that Joseph and I have a very long list of things yes. <laughs> that we have been enjoying and not able to talk about. So for sure, um, I do want to spend most of our time today talking about that. So yes, a bit of a catch up uh, roundup of what we've been watching since the strikes have started. So yes, yes, that's going to be the name of the game today. Indeed. I'm curious to see what we have in common. I know there's some for sure. There's some that I, I know are not in common, but it'll be fun. Yes. yes. Um, let's just go every other one. And then if we run into one that we've both watched, we can just talk about it. Um, yeah. I have more than you. You do. So I will start. I'm going to throw out a couple that I know are older. Um... And I'm pretty positive you haven't watched recently. So, um, but Blake and I, my boyfriend, we have a list of movies that we're trying to watch together, like either important movies to me or to him. And like, we're going through this list. So nice. Um, my contribution to the list included Ever After, which is like Love a it. classic Cinderella retelling. So Love good. It. Um, and then we also watched singing in the rain oh wow yeah nice and pride and prejudice so um just hitting in with some of those those mm -hmm. good old classics from childhood the kira knightley and pride and prejudice i'm assuming yes yes the 2000 not the not the bbc pride and prejudice both good yeah have their place no, One is the... highly more cinematic than the other, though. Yes. And that was really, I was like, the music for Pride and Prejudice 2005. Oh, yeah. Gorgeous. And the, and the cinematography is just amazing. So, which he agreed. Mm -hmm. 
And he said he would even watch it again sometime. So. Wow. Yeah. What a guy. We have a lot of other movies on our list. So I don't anticipate I really that su- happening anytime soon. But Yeah. I was really surprised you didn't whip out any uh, Errol Flynn stuff. Oh, it's it's on the list. We just haven't gotten to it yet. You'll get there. We will. For sure. Yeah. All so right. uh, hit me with one of yours. Well, these are... I don't know if you saw one of them. I know you for sure saw the other. But I'm going to put them together because they were released at the same time. This was like okay. right when the strikes were starting. Mm-hmm. Uh, Barbenheimer, you know. <laughs> uh, yeah. Oppenheimer and Barbie. Um, yeah. I did go see them in the theater. Uh, I saw Oppenheimer first, and then I saw Barbie. Um, okay, so let's both... talk about Oppenheimer first, then. Yeah, yeah. Because um, I did not see that one. Okay. So Oppenheimer was a great biopic about the man that created, um, like, the main mind behind creating the nuclear bombs that were dropped mm-hmm. on um, Japan at the end mm-hmm. of World War II. So mm-hmm. it's a, uh, it's very well done. It's Christopher Nolan is the director, and he's done a lot of great movies, uh, a lot of very like intellectual and psychological type movies, which is you know the same for this one. You really dig deep into like the morality of Oppenheimer and how he felt about this creation. Uh, you know the whole the famous quote. I am become death, destroyer of worlds. Mm-hmm. Um, or he's he's quoting that Indian. I think it's like Vishnu that says that. But uh, yeah, it's if I'm wrong, sorry, I'm not well educated in like Indian mythology or religion. But uh, yeah, Oppenheimer was a great movie. It was very long. It was very like I don't. It was an incredible movie, but I don't know if I need to see it again. It's okay. it's kind of one of those where it's like okay, I've seen it. I've experienced it. I feel like if I watch it again, like maybe I would notice more things, but it doesn't seem necessary, I guess. Yeah. It's not, it's not like, uh, action movies or, you know, those, like, it's not like a Marvel movie. It's not an Avengers movie or star Wars movie. It's very sure. artsy, <laughs> Yeah. but, sure. uh, it, it was very, very good. The music, the score is incredible. Uh, the music is just so outstanding, but yeah. and the, you know, spoiler, he makes the bombs and they go off. But, you know, yeah, the scene where the bomb first goes off in the testing is just so powerful. It's so uh, just heart wrenching. And it's I, I would recommend anyone see it. But mm-hmm. uh, yeah, it was great. Cool. Yeah, it's on so, my list, but I think Blake is in a similar position as you is that he doesn't feel like he necessarily needs to see it again. I think he would see it again with me if i asked sure but um maybe i'm maybe i'm wrong but so i have not right. seen oppenheimer but I, th- I think i would like to i don't know i, it's I not, think you it's not my kind of movie generally but i'm right. intrigued i feel like it would be good it would be good for you to see it and it sure. would be i think it's good for any it's it's not a kids movie. I I saw people walking in there with like their twelve year olds. I'm like, man, this is gonna go right over Boy. their heads. Like, th- you, this is this is, and there's there's some there's some like sexual content. So yeah, it was it's, it's not for kids, uh, no. just because I think kids will find it extremely boring. Yeah, but uh, fair. Anyway, uh, very interesting for adults that have mm-hmm. like a knowledge of, you know. The world and like where the world stands today and how that those events impacted where we stand you know yeah anyway that's yeah. oppenheimer which uh paired with barbie made yeah. quite the double feature it, i didn't see them on the same night i know some people did some people were rocking that barbenheimer meme you know yeah. um but yeah barbie you saw this one too i did um this was like yeah Um, okay. So I feel like Barbie got a lot of hype that it was going to be a particular movie. Like it was going to embody feminism and be hard hitting. Um, and I walked away feeling like it was really feminism light. Yeah. It was like feminism 101, like an intro to feminism, which I guess if it's for, if it's for like little girls that are going in, you know, um, I, I guess, but I just I expected I more from the director, um, 
and with how much conversation it was stirring up, I expected more. Um, and like, I think Ryan Gosling did a great job as Ken, but I was a little frustrated that Ken ended up being so much of the main plot. Yeah. Which just felt antithetical to what they were trying to do. As far as feminism goes. The best the best but, scene arguably in the entire movie and the scene that took off the most and kind of took the internet by yeah. storm was Ken's song. Right. Like his yeah. music number. So it's just kind of like, Oh, <laughs> okay. Which is like ironic <laughs> yeah. and unfortunate for a movie that's supposed to be about, about Barbie feminism and Barbie. Especially um, since Bar- like nobody really cares about Ken, like it, it like the dolls, like right. everyone's obsessed with Barbie, right. but So it's just kind of funny that that's the thing that really took off. Yeah. But it's a stellar Um, performance by Margot Robbie and Ryan Gosling. Oh, my gosh. They both did great. Everyone, like, the casting was amazing. They all did phenomenally. Um, The ending was weird. Agreed. Uh, For sure. It ended and I was like, what? How? Because it ends with Barbie, like, becoming real and going to a gynecologist. Mm-hmm. That's how it yeah. ends, and um, I was just like, "Wow!" So this whole movie about Barbie being more than just like what she looks like, and we're going to end by turning it into her being just about her lady parts. Odd choice. Yeah, like being a woman is more than just going to the gynecologist. Mm-hmm. Um, so that was weird. I didn't love that. I thought, I thought the ending was mishandled, I guess. That's what I'm saying. And there, there was that scene where I forget what her name, like the character name, but it was basically the, the mother of the, Mm -hmm. the kid, the one that actually played with this Barbie, Mm -hmm. you know, um, she had that kind of monologue moment talking about like the difficulties of being a woman. And I was, that was so good. It was good. I, I do feel like it was good, but not like groundbreaking. Like a scene, no. like something I would have seen on any like comment section of a Tumblr post, like yeah. in like ten years ago. It was so, nothing I hadn't heard before, but I will say, like, if this is someone's true introduction to feminism, it's a good place to start. Which I think is why it falls under the feminism one hundred and one. Right. But the ending, yeah. they fumbled They're, the ending. They did. They they definitely were getting super deep, uh, mm-hmm. and it wasn't. They still, they still, I don't know, it's weird. It's weird. It's a weird ending. We don't have to linger too long on Barbie. Yeah. But um, the Ken's music number, though, was actually really, really good. Oh, <laughs> and, for like, the sure. Song, that song is so catchy. <laughs> yes. And visually? Uh, amazing. Very well done. Yes, for sure. Um, yeah. I did not know that Will Ferrell was going to be in it, and I got to admit that I was a little disappointed. Me too. It always I was like, me oh, off. what? <laughs> whenever, whenever no. Will Ferrell, man, <laughs> whenever Will Ferrell shows up, it's just, it's just like, I, I don't know. It, it almost just loses. Not like it's not like the movie was trying to have any kind of credibility to it, but it's, but it's, but it I kind don't, of you know was what I mean? because it's Greta Gerwig and like she has like, ma- like her rendition of Little Women is phenomenal. Yeah. And so I was hoping for that kind of care and attention to Barbie. And, <laughs> and that then Will Ferrell comes wasn't in. wasn't quite what happened. Um, uh, man. Anyway. Like nothing against that. Will Ferrell as a person. It's just. No. Uh, he ha- But he plays a very specific character. Yeah. Almost always. The times when he breaks that are the best. But it's very rare. And that was not the case here. It was like, the same oh, man-child character. It's Buddy the Elf. You know, yeah. all grown up. He stayed in the toy business, and now he yeah. owns. <laughs> now, he, now he owns Mattel and runs Barbie. Good job, yeah. Buddy the Elf. Uh, yeah, that's my new headcanon for Barbie. That that is actually Buddy the Elf. That makes more sense than what the happened, actual ending. <laughs> but anyway. All right. So those are my two: Oppenheimer and Barbie. Okay. Um. Let me hit you with. Um, okay, Blake and I watched Cloud Atlas because we had read the book. 
Mm-hmm. And so then we watched the movie, and the movie was very good. And I think if I had watched the movie first, I would have had a better time grasping what was happening in the book because the book is very like you're in this storyline break you're in this storyline in the future break and it's like that russian doll effect mm-hmm. but the movie was able to kind of like blend and weave them together so that it was a little more cohesive um okay. at least for me mm-hmm. and the movie was very well done so yeah so as far as that the book is also go. very good as far as adaptations go, I feel like it was pretty they pulled true. It off. Yeah, cool. and they pulled it off really well. Cool. Um, and then I also watched, I visited Leanne this summer, and we watched two movies together. We watched Emma, which I had seen before. That was actually the last movie that I saw in theaters with your wife before COVID happened. It was oh. like that weekend we went to Lincoln and we oh. saw Emma, and then the next You're week right. the world shut down. <laughs> I thought um, that was Little Women in my mind for some no, reason. it was Emma. Um, okay. So that was nice to watch that again. The new Emma that came out in 2020. It was very good. Um, and then we, we also watched Asteroid City. <laughs> what is Asteroid City? <laughs> Asteroid City is, um, oh my gosh, what's the director that does the like, very stylized, um, there's a meme going on. He also did Budapest. Um, um, oh my gosh. I have to look it up. Hold on. I couldn't tell you. It also has Margot Ro- Robbie, which is funny. It's a Wes Anderson film. Oh, okay. Um, yeah. Which, like, yeah, visually it was very pretty. But what a weird movie. And it hmm. was boring. Most of it oh, was very over. boring. Dang, that's not what you want to hear. <laughs> um, and just weird. It has like a killer cast. It's got Scarlett Johansson. It has Tom Hanks. Um, Brian Cranston. Scarlett Johansson. Jason Schwartzman. Huh. Um, she didn't do it for you, huh? Like, it was just weird. It was, I can't even, I couldn't even tell you what the movie was really about. Okay. It was very... I am sure that there are people that really loved it, but I walked away being like... Leanne and I were halfway through and we both looked at each other like, I mean, nothing's really happening, but do we keep watching just to see if something happens? So we finished it. Yeah, so you guys are both on the same page. You weren't crazy. Yeah, (laughs) no. No. So. Okay. Interesting. Yeah. All Should right. I do one more since I have so many more than you? Um, sure, do one more. Um, also watch Chicken Run with Mom and Dad. Oh, I love that movie. They're making the <laughs> second one. Are they really? Yeah. That's exciting. I do love Chicken At Run. At least. It's so good. I think so. I think I'd heard that they are, but. It's so funny. Watching it as an adult, even funnier. Hmm. I love that movie. All right. Okay. For me. See, I have a lot of shows on mine, which is yeah, so probably why. So, One Piece well, live action. Oh, I did not watch any of that. I know you did not. So that's one that, <laughs> that I have that you don't. The One Piece live action adaptation on Netflix was coming out right when these strikes happened. And I was so sad I couldn't talk about it because it was, as far as adaptations go, I have actually seen the anime up through where the live action okay, left off. That was going to be so, my question. Yes, so I have actually seen all the content from the live action, and it was a really stinking good adaptation. It was it nice. was really good. It, it it did incorporate some things, um, that weren't in the anime, but I think they were in the manga. Like it's an adaptation of the manga, actually, not necessarily the anime. Sure, which is better. Right, I agree. It's better to do an adaptation of the source material than the already done adaptation. Right. Truth. It's, For it's sure. the law of diminishing returns. You're making a copy yeah. of a copy. It's going to get worse yeah. every time. Yeah. It was it was very good though. The acting was amazing. Um, I I couldn't think of anyone better to play Monkey D. Luffy for the protagonist. <laughs> he was a, a joy, and all of them were incredible. 
Um, I loved it. I loved every second of it. So that was that was definitely a highlight. I loved the One Piece live action adaptation, and I would highly recommend that you watch it or anyone that's a, that's an anime fan. Even if you haven't seen One Piece, I think you'll find it entertaining. So yeah, I don't doubt that at all. Yeah. And I think if you want to get into One Piece and you're overwhelmed by the anime and like the sheer volume, mm-hmm. it's a good way to dip your toes in and see yeah. if you like the story without feeling like there's literally hundreds of episodes. There was a moment at the end where they they did make me cry by incorporating the theme song from the anime into the score. Aww. And it's always those music moments that get me. Yeah. I'm such a band nerd. It's so dumb. I love it. I love that for you. All right. So <laughs> what's what's your next one? Um let's see. I also watched Wally. Oh, right. Yeah, I forgot you mentioned that to me. Um so I feel like most of the time when Wally comes out we end up cutting a lot of the conversation out of because it comes up in like weird periods. Where yeah. it has like nothing to do with anything that we're talking about. Yeah. Um, so I don't think I'd watched Wally since I was in high school, genuinely. Mm-hmm. Um, and so it was really fun to watch again. Mm-hmm. And um, I still feel like my initial like reaction to the inerrant fat phobia that's in it was justified, but maybe not as harsh as it needed to be fair um yeah and like it's very good (laughs) and i definitely teared up several times watching it because wally is just so stinking cute and so dedicated to what he's doing and then so dedicated to eva like it's just it's very good so Mm -hmm. yeah i really like wally a lot i think that I also like the big, like the, the anti-corporation, um, yes. takes, yeah. like it has a pretty strong, um, uh, is it anti-capitalist? Probably. I would probably, yeah. yeah, I think so. It has, it has like that kind of message of, of like, don't destroy the planet with greed. Right. Right. <laughs> um, which well, I'm and into. Then, like the reveal, the reveal that, that they had put in like a fail safe to have them never return to earth, but not have them realize that they weren't ever going to return to earth. Like how evil. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And the, the robots are just like keeping them in their chairs. I know that's like part of the the controversial thing for you. Um, But it's, I feel like it, I feel like it's, it's better. It's more palatable that it was like a plot by yes. like the ship AI to keep the humans like subjugated and like right. domesticated, keep them in their chairs. Don't let right. them do anything. Hold their right. hands through every activity. Don't let them be too active, you know, um, make them, make them. Yeah. And it's not just soft. like their physical bodies. Yeah. It's not just their physical bodies that they're like, limiting it's also their minds right like it's when yeah. they look away from the screens on accident that they start to like realize oh there's like actually other people here mm-hmm. um and like what a powerful moment that is so um for me I'm it was changing more, my tune a little bit yeah for me it was more of a it was more of a statement about the, like this is the the end result of like late stage corporate greed of mm-hmm. just like pushing out, pushing out all these highly processed foods that are cheap, but terrible for you. And highly processed foods, highly processed content, like yeah. keeping you glued to your screens. Um, it's like, this is just a ship full of dopamine addicts. And that's, yeah, yeah that, exactly. And just, just pure hedonistic, you know, like it was, mm-hmm. so that, that's more of the take I was approaching it from. But again, I still, I understand your take and I think it's valid as well. So thank you. Thank you. But I, but I, I just wanted to say that I do feel like it was handled better. And my initial Mm -hmm. reaction to it in high school was definitely like, I was projecting some of my own insecurities and also my, yeah. And some of my like defensiveness for our grandma who was wheelchair bound. Like I was very like, Oh my gosh, grandma, grandma is not like this. And it like like made me mad. It like riled me up. Um, yeah. 
But watching it now as an adult, I, I can see the message they're making, and I, I think it's super valid and really powerful. So, um, yeah. So I watched Wally <laughs> randomly one Saturday morning. Awesome. Um, and then I also watched Spider Man Across the Spider Verse. Who nice. Oh my gosh. Did that come out during what? the strikes, or was that before? Did I already talk about how hoping I saw that? I don't think that you have. Hope and I did see that, the, like the, the sequel. <laughs> we did. Yeah. So so yes. just throwing that out there in case I never mentioned it before. And it wasn't on my list, so I might have. I, I think the timeline got shaky for me. Of like, when did this drug start again? Yeah. So anyway, keep going. And I've been keeping like a list on my phone. but <laughs> You're better than me. <laughs> uh, well, because I knew I was never going to remember if I didn't. Mm-hmm. Um, but Blake had said that it was like one of his favorite movies. Okay. So, and I love the first one. I just hadn't gotten around to seeing the second one yet. So Mm -hmm. we were watching it and it's like, we've been watching it for a long time. Like it's a long movie. (sighs) And I'm like, as it's going, I'm like, wow, they have a lot of work to do in like, surely this is going to be, surely we're getting close to the end. And it ends with the hugest cliffhanger ever. Man. Ever. I have I have never felt... And I turned to Blake and I said, we are watching the third one when it comes out and putting it on the list right now. <laughs> the only time a cliffhanger has left me feeling that, like, riled because mm-hmm. of the cliffhangeriness of it was mm-hmm. seeing the second Pirates of the Caribbean movie in yes. theaters as a kid. Um, Completely agreed. Like... It's it's the same exact thing of like a highly successful first film that is self-contained and can be its own story. And then it catches fire and everyone loves it. And then they're like, oh, we'll make a sequel. And then the yeah. sequel has a crazy cliffhanger at the end of it. And it's yeah. like with Pirates, it was like, oh, Jack Sparrow got eaten by the crack and Anne Barbosa's back somehow. What? Right. Um, right. And then, and they're going to try to save Jack or whatever. And then in this one, it's like, oh, my goodness. I don't want to like say things and spoil it because that's pretty recent still that yeah. it came out. But man, the... Ugh. Ugh. The characters, the acting, the voice yes. acting, the music. Yes. Um, Incredible. I love Gwen's story. Mm-hmm. I can't wait to see how that comes full man. circle. And I love all the different art styles that are shown. Yes. With, man, I don't like her, know. Her world is like very pastel and like very mm-hmm. abstract. And then you'd, you'd see like the... Like the old timey vulture, you know, in the beginning of it, and yeah. his art style is very like um, Michelangelo type, you yeah. know. Well, hers is like pastel, but also it's like emotionally driven, right? Like when she's feeling a certain way, the colors shift to that direction, and yeah. like her dad has his own color palette, and when they start to like come together, oh, it's it's so artfully done. Yeah, truly. And then there's the one um, Spider-Man. I I don't know what his name is, but it's the one that like kind of sounds like a scratchy tape, like a cassette tape almost. The punk one, the punk Spider-Man yes. from from the UK. Yeah. Yes, I really love him a lot. He's got he some killer lines. He was amazing. <laughs> like some of uh, the best lines in Spider-Man. I think he mm-hmm. delivered. So good. Uh, I also really loved the Spider-Man from India um, and that, yeah. that whole thing. That whole oh. uh, plot point was very entertaining to watch. It, entertaining and heart-wrenching. Like, oh, yeah. all of it. All of it just gets you right in the feels. So good. Such a good movie. I cannot wait for the third one. It better not take as long. <laughs> I'm sure it will. Because the, art, because the art of it, like, there's no way that that doesn't take forever. I guess. But it's so worth it. We'll be back at the theaters in two or three years. <laughs> <laughs> For sure. Uh, okay, cool. Uh, next one is also on your list. The mm-hmm. Ahsoka show. <gasps> yes. Ahsoka Tano. All right. Let's let's talk about Ahsoka for a little bit. Maybe it's we can. It's been have, a while now since I've watched it. <laughs> does it deserve its own unpacking Ahsoka episode at some it point? It might. It probably does. So because we, we do want... that with like almost all Star Wars content, so let's just do a blanket like our general feelings about it, and then we'll and then I can rewatch it and we can do an unpacking because it was seriously yes. a long time ago now. Um, my reaction, uh, my overall reaction is loved it. Some of like I think that my favorite Star Wars stuff that Disney has come out with so far is like 
Rogue One, Andor, and The Ahsoka Show. Um, what about and, the Obi-Wan Kenobi Show? I mean, I liked it, but it's not in the top three for me. Okay, fair, fair. Um, I agree I, with I your liked list. it. And I would throw in a couple of Mandalorian episodes, but not the whole show. Um, I would say like season one Mando. Thank you. Season one Mandalorian. Yeah. It got a little too reliant on like other, you know, Mm -hmm. you know what I mean? Um, Bringing in other characters anyway. But so like Rogue One and or and Ahsoka. Oh, Ahsoka was so good. It was so good. Clone Wars. That's all I have to say. Clone Wars. Clone Wars, but also, um, I mean, it was basically the Rebels cast come to life. Yeah, we got to see the continuation of that story, and yeah. we got to see live action Clone Wars, and we yes. got, you know, it's yes, it was all over the internet, so I don't feel like it's too much of a spoiler, but we got to see Hayden Christensen be Ugh. Anakin Skywalker again in the world between worlds. Oh, I'm man. I am so into it. My and heart. Hera, ugh. Oh my Hera. goodness. I love Hera so much. Um, I don't want to get into like the Ezra and Thrawn of it all too much. Sure. For spoiler reasons. But mm-hmm. I mean, it's not a spoiler to say that's the goal of like the main plot of the show is finding Ezra. Right. And for like the good guys and the whole plot for the bad guys is finding Thrawn, you know. Right. Um, but that was all executed super well. The visuals were great. My one, like, I don't want to critique too much. We'll get into it with the unpacking, but yeah, um, I still have some critiques. But Same. anyway, yeah, Same. loved it. Yeah, very good. Okay, give me another one. Um, this is so mine are not in any particular order, so I apologize. Um, I mine was... were in order, but I've not been telling you them in order. I've been kind of trying okay. to group them in ways that make sense. Because these two were grouped together because they're both on Disney+. Plus. But I just finished watching Loki Season 2. <gasps> I haven't even started it. I didn't even realize it was coming out until someone posted a, the finale like thing. Oh, so did it spoil the finale for you? I'm so sorry. No, 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 no. Okay. It was just like it was like just a small moment of like Loki walking. But like I didn't give it. And I was okay, like, okay. oh, Loki's back. Oh, <laughs> I should watch that. Season two is done now and okay. so good. Is it? How does so it compare good. to season one? Better. Better. Um, I th- I think. I think that, well, I don't remember how many episodes season one was. This one was only six episodes. Okay. But the way it's just like the perfect ending to the show, because they're not, they're not intended to do a third season. It's just the two seasons. Oh, okay. And it's just such a perfect ending for the show yeah. and I don't want to necessarily say for the character it could be like sure. they could just kind of that could just be Tom Hiddleston's sign off on the character and if it is such an epic sign off and so amazing and yeah. I only wish that it could have been on a big screen mm. um, it was wow. it was that it was one of I was watching some reviews afterwards and a lot of the people were saying um, that the the final scenes was some of the best like visual storytelling without dialogue that any Marvel thing has done so far. Like they didn't, they didn't rely on dialogue for it, but you knew what was happening. You knew what Loki was doing and it was just so perfect and dramatic and artistic and beautiful at the end. Like the special effects are just gorgeous. Love it. I loved Loki season two. So do I need to rewatch season one to remember what's happening for season two? Or do they do a good job of bringing the audience in? Um, I believe there was like a recap before. Sweet. Um, or maybe just like look up a little synopsis. But I think there was a recap at the beginning of the season. Okay, cool. I didn't, I didn't watch season one again beforehand and I was fine. But, uh, I'll add yeah. it to my list of things to watch. Awesome. Thank you. Love Tom Hiddleston. What a great man. Yeah, for sure. And Owen Wilson. They're both great. It's true. You know, and Owen, it's funny, because we've talked about Will Ferrell and Owen Wilson, and they do a lot of stuff together, or have in the past. Mm-hmm. But I feel like Owen Wilson has done a better job of making himself... He's got range. The roles. He does have range. He, he can do the, like, man, Marley and Me, 
Mm-hmm. He can do <gasps> he can do dramatic roles. Yeah, he can. you know, he can. he he can do it. He can pull out all the stops on that kind of thing and really mm-hmm. make you just ball your eyes out. So, mm-hmm. Owen Wilson's got range for sure. Yeah. So, anyway, your turn. Um. Yeah. These are all kind of. Almost all of the rest weird. of mine are Halloween themed. <laughs> okay. Well, I will save my Halloween themed ones then. Um. And then followed by Anna. Okay, here's here's some. Um, Everything, everywhere, all at once. Have you seen that? Oh, I have not seen it yet, but I really oh want to. Oh my gosh, it's so good. Yeah. And it's one of those movies that I know that when I watch it again, I will pick up so much more. Mm-hmm. Um, I've heard that. But it's so gripping. Yeah. And it's amazingly well done. Yeah. And it's I- such a good story about... Um, like familial relationships and like specifically parent child and like how, how powerful those relationships can be or Mm -hmm. how damaging they can be. Um, and it's just incredible. Um, so you should watch it and then we have to talk about it, but I don't want to spoil anything. Okay. Um, fair enough. I'm, then, I'm definitely going to see it, and I'm excited to see it. Yeah. It's so good. Um, and then Blake and I also watched Quiz Lady on Hulu this last weekend. Because <laughs> I had seen an ad for it on TikTok, and then it like it was out on Hulu. And I was like, oh my gosh, can we watch that? And he was a good sport. Um, but it, it's got Aquafina and mm. Sandra O. Oh. Um, okay. They play sisters. And... Will Ferrell is in this and okay. actually didn't hate it because he plays oh, like he plays a game show host mm-hmm. um, and he's very like subdued. Mm-hmm. Like he plays a like when he's doing the game show host role, it's very like animated. But when he's not, he's just like kind of a normal dude. Sure. Which I kind of like that. I was like, yeah. yeah. That was good. <laughs> I um, I should say I don't like dislike Will Ferrell. I just think that I don't he, either. Sometimes he doesn't belong but, in certain movies. But, but generally, when he pops up, I'm like, ugh. Yeah. But he you wasn't, know what you're gonna get. Right, but he wasn't playing the man child role. Good, good for him. I'm happy. Which for is him. which is really like my beef is with the man child role. Like I right. do not enjoy that kind of comedy. The only exception is Elf, and that's because he's playing. An elf from the North Pole. The concept is super funny. Yes. A kid gets taken by Santa and right. raised in the North Pole. And then he goes back to New York as an adult right. after being raised by North Pole yeah. elves. Super Perfect. funny. Love that. Um, but in general, the man-child comedy thing is like not my fave. Yeah. Like um, Anchorman. Like, uh, <sighs> yeah, whatever. Blades anyway. of Glory. All of that. Yeah. Um, <laughs> Anyway, okay, Blaze um, of Glory does make me laugh though, just because the other guy's Napoleon Dynamite. Oh, really? I didn't, I didn't yeah. realize that's funny. Yeah. Anyway. Anyway, Quiz Lady was very good. Um, it's very like, it's very quirky. It's a comedy, but like, there's mm-hmm. heartfelt moments. Um, it's, yeah, it's interesting. Um, and then I also watched part one of the witcher season three but i haven't watched part two yet me neither now that you mentioned it and i remember part one being kind of confused because they are making they seem to be making irrational choices occasionally um, i'm i'm gonna make a hot take and just say i'm kind of done (laughs) with the witcher franchise not the games i'm done with the show um I'm I'm just done. It's it's, it's funny because I can see why Henry Cavill is also done. Yeah, a hundred percent. Oh yeah, I, this I understand why you were like mm, no more. I've done like, my man. Time. Talk about something being f- completely fumbled in the writers' room. Like just yeah, some of the decisions being made are just not like the the character decisions don't make sense anymore. Like right, it's just weird. Right, like there's a part where Sorella goes with um. Purple eyes. Yennefer. Yennefer. Mm-hmm. To the 
academy or whatever. And she experiences some pretty, like, awful hazing. Um, but I'm not even really sure why she went with Yennefer to begin with. Like, that didn't yeah. feel like that was really clear. And then she just runs away. Uh, that whole plot it, point was it, so bizarre. The whole plot didn't... It, it was just very strange. And, like, the fact that Yennefer was just going along with the hazing and not being like, we don't have to haze people. <laughs> was I don't know. It was strange. I didn't love it. I will probably eventually watch the second part. Um, but I will not be watching season four. So, I, If anything, I'm more likely... I think I'm more likely to read the books than I am to continue watching the show. Yeah. Because I have yeah. some of the books, and I, I want to read them, just because I know they're influential fantasy series. Sure. But, uh, uh, yeah, I think I'm done with the show, personally. But, mm-hmm. yeah. Well, this is kind of on the same theme okay. as, as The Witcher. I watched Castlevania Nocturne, which is uh-huh. the next Castlevania thing that they're starting. And it, it takes place after the events of the first okay. Castlevania series by like hundreds of years. It's, it's like oh, okay. set in like colonial times. Oh, so it's weird. like colonial time vampires <laughs> and it takes place in France. So there's like French oh. revolution stuff happening. Um, okay with vampires and like vampire hunters. It's, it's interesting. So I, I liked it. Some people didn't like the voice acting as much. I didn't notice that as much, but I'm, you know, maybe I'm more forgiving in that kind of thing. Mm -hmm. But, um, I mean the voice acting in the first one, I mean, Richard Armitage as Trevor Belmont. It's just so good. I love Richard Armitage's voice. Oh my gosh. But, uh, yeah, but Castlevania Nocturne was, was fun and that's another thing that ended on a crazy cliffhanger and mm. i am really pumped and annoyed <laughs> uh, fair, fair. so yeah there's that and that starts my halloween theme stuff before i get into anime stuff okay so let me um i have okay. one two three four five six seven eight things left i have six things left so we'll let you I go should first. keep going yeah so Keeping on the vampire theme, What We Do in the Shadows. Uh, have you heard of this show? I don't think so. It's on Hulu. Do you have Hulu? Blake has Hulu. Nice. So it is hilarious. It's <laughs> it's um, it's about these vampires that live on Staten Island. There was a movie that came out first. Like Taika Waititi is, is, um, like made the movie, and he has a hand in the show as well. Uh, it's just super funny, super kooky. These vampires live in Staten Island and it's a comedy, uh, and they just get up to all these wacky shenanigans. Um, it is so funny. It's one of my new favorite comedy shows right now. Love it. Um, mostly because I really love Matt Perry, I believe is his name, who plays the vampire Laszlo. Um, let me look up and make sure that's his name. Matt Perry. Um, like... Matthew Perry, like from Friends, who just died? Oh, nope. That was just a Freudian slip because I've seen his name all over the place. Yeah. Um, what we that's so sad. It was very sad. What we do. It is very sad. It is Matt Berry <laughs> with a B. Um uh, he was also in gotcha. IT Crowd. Um Did you see all of IT Crowd? Yes. So you know the boss, the main boss that yes. like dies, and then his son comes in and takes over. Yeah, the son that comes in and gotcha. takes over. That's Matt. That's Matt Berry. Um, gotcha, gotcha. He is so funny, and he is my favorite character in the show. He's so <laughs> funny. So um, it's very adult humor. Um, sure. <laughs> so if you're if you're interested in that, uh, check it out. Uh, it's I like it a lot. They're on, like, season... I think they just uh, finished season three or four. Nice. Um, So, yeah, it's still airing. Hopefully. It better get renewed. So, yeah, that's that one. And should you take a turn or should to do another one? Well, my next one is one that's definitely on your list, too. Well, let me go. Because now if you go and then I go, we'll end on you. Nice. But also, like, I know the one I'm going to say you also watch. So, Um, for my spooky season watch, one of... Well, actually, I want to say, before I get to that, I did try to watch Cabinets of Curiosity, the Guillermo del Toro <laughs> okay. show. Okay. 
And I think I watched the first episode and a half, and then I was like, you know what? No. It's not for me. That's okay. That's okay. I'm not, I don't really enjoy this at all. So I stopped. Um, there were some that were just downright disgusting. <laughs> the rat one is what, like, I was like, oh, I can't. And it had David Hewlett, who I love, but I, like, could not. I couldn't. Mm-hmm. So. Um, but the show that I did watch, um, The Fall of House Usher. Same. What? Which you heard us <laughs> reference a lot during yes. our Edgar Allan Poe episode, which we really wanted to talk about, but we couldn't. Um, right. Yes. This is I, what we were alluding to. So I tried to watch all of the shows that this person, puts. I forget his name. It's a he, right? Mm-hmm. The guy. I try to watch all of the spooky shows that this guy puts out because they're always like around Halloween time. Started with Haunting at Bly Manor. Mm-hmm. Uh, no, not Bly Manor. Hill House. House. Haunting of Hill House. Then Bly Manor. Midnight Mass. Um, Midnight Club. Mm-hmm. Which was kind of a womp womp. Uh, <laughs> didn't really deliver. Right. But um, We've talked about that before. But man, Fall of House of Usher was just... Mwah. It was great. I loved it. Uh, yeah. yeah. Uh, it has so many twists and turns that you <laughs> don't see coming. Mm-hmm. Um, but they're done in a great way. Like it, yes. it didn't. It didn't feel too contrived or like he was no. trying to like take us on a roller coaster. Like it just. It felt like a natural occurrence of events, as natural as they can be in a supernatural show like that. But it yeah. was well conceptualized. It was well handled and it was well delivered yeah and it had mark hamill in it which i did not expect man that threw me i I loved it is that mark hamill it is mark hamill (laughs) man what a great Um, guy i love mark but it was great it was great yeah they all Um, mock man and the guy that plays um whoever plays the main usher guy mm -hmm, the patriarch you know Mm -hmm. um man that guy can act. Uh, oh my gosh! He had he had some of the most just depressing and heartbreaking monologues I've ever seen. Uh, talking about like when life mm-hmm. gives you lemons, mm-hmm. that monologue mm-hmm. broke me and made me so angry. Yeah. <laughs> uh man, it's it's great. It's so bizarre because the show is not at all feasible, right? But it took mm-hmm. so many elements from Edgar Allan Poe and married them together. And it also does an excellent job of examining the human condition for so many of these characters that are incredibly flawed Mm -hmm. and have like real issues. Like these issues are real in life. Um, Mm -hmm. And like what a tragedy on how they're all addressed. Um, And to be fair, at times, incredibly gruesome. Like not at all. Okay for kids. No way. Some of the grossest horror deaths I've ever seen. Uh, one in particular, and it was it was like one of the first, the first ones one. too. Oh yeah. man, brutal! Like man, like Mortal Kombat level of just like yeah. gross, disgusting. But it was so good though. The show was great. So mm-hmm. if you're into horror, highly recommend. I'm not. I would say that I am not into horror. As a general rule, but I do make exceptions. And, but if you're someone who really doesn't like body horror specifically, this is probably not. Yeah, that's fair. It for you. Just because the deaths are like in general, there's not body horror, but the death scenes are. They do not pull punches. No, not at all. So. Not at all. Um, but I think it's worth checking out all of this guy's stuff um, if you're if you mm-hmm. like the genre, um, or if you're just start, curious. Yeah, I would start with the Haunting of Hill House because it's scary, but it's not like Same. as gross. I would do it chronologically. Yeah, in in the release order, but you mm-hmm. can skip the Midnight Club. Honestly, it's not like it's the Midnight Club is a bummer because it wanted a season two, and it didn't get it, yeah. and so it ends on like a weird cliffhanger. And it doesn't deliver on the promise. So just, yeah, that one, expect to be disappointed. There's some good moments. Yeah. Um, 
So that was yours. Okay, so for my next spooky thing, it was a movie. So my next ones, my next three are spooky movies that Hope and I watched during the Halloween time. The first one is called As Above, So Below. And it is, uh, we didn't realize ahead of time uh, that it's a found footage movie. So it's like all shaky cam, Cloverfield style, uh, (laughs) uh, Blair Witch style type stuff. Sure. But if I recall, it's not a favorite of yours. I really like a... Blair Witch, but yeah. I don't know. I have to be in the right mood, and I didn't expect it. If I don't expect it, it's, it's kind hard. of off-putting. <laughs> yeah, for sure. Um, but no, it was uh, it was disappointing because I went in knowing what it was about, and I was really hoping that it would have, I don't know, it didn't really deliver for me. Um, some people really like it, but I it didn't. I don't know. It's basically it's a movie about. Do you know about the catacombs under Paris? Paris. Mm-hmm. Um, these this vast networks of catacombs that's got like all these bodies buried down there, and it's mm-hmm. like you can very easily just get lost and die in these catacombs because it's pitch black, and yeah, it's a it's like a terrifying concept. So the concept of this is these people go down into the catacombs under Paris and they find a portal to hell. Um, it's like. <laughs> Yeah. So, so it's, it's, I was expecting it to be way more gripping or I guess just more engaging than it was. I feel like part of it was that it was a found footage movie and that there wasn't any kind of like musical score to back it up oh. because it was all found oh. footage. Yeah. Um, so I feel like, guy. I feel like it could have, uh, been better. So that For was sure. kind of disappointing. For sure. I'm so glad I watched it because, you know, even the things you watch that you don't like, it helps you refine your your taste, you know, and realize what you do and do not enjoy. So. Yeah. Fascinating. Um, okay. I also watched Devil in Ohio. Okay. Um, which is a... Um... It has it has Emily Deschanel in it. She played Bones in Bones. Oh, um, is that wait? Is she related to Zoe Deschanel? It's her older sister. Yeah. I never had that connection. I didn't Emily, know Emily is the older sister. Yeah. I never I never knew her real name. Oh. I just knew her as yeah. Bones. Yes. So Bones. <laughs> um, uh, that's funny. And she is a psychiatrist, and it's based, It's about a girl that gets away from a cult in Ohio, okay. Okay. and um, and like it's about the one. cult. Sorry, <laughs> it's okay. It's basically about the cult trying to get her back. This girl, um, mm-hmm. and it's very. It. I don't know. There were parts where I was like, meh. But if you're, it's more of like a psychological thriller, I suppose. And like, if you like the occult and like that kind of thing, Mm -hmm. you might find it interesting. It does end on kind of a cliffhanger, but I don't know if they're going to get a second season or not. I don't know if it deserves a second season or not. I will say it's, it's a little unsettling because the girl, like the cult the girl comes from, it seems very Amish. But they're a bunch of Satanists. And so, like, that's weird. It's a weird oh, juxtaposition. A, it's kind of it's a It's very trope. common. It's a trope. Yeah. But it's weird. Yeah. It's not something I normally engage in. But I like I like that actress, Temperance Brennan's um, mm-hmm. Bones' is actress. So. Dish now. Emily Dish now. Yep. Cool. Alrighty. So, for my next spooky movie, we watched the sequel to The Nun. Nun, the Nun 2. Oh. And um, that's the movie that we were watching when you called me. <laughs> <laughs> and, man, that movie was so dumb. <laughs> was it? The ads for it freaked me out. They come up on yeah. my... They were. They're not anymore, thankfully. Coming up on my YouTube. And I was like, I hate this. I don't want to watch the ad for this. Let me skip it. I mean, visually, The Nun is terrifying. Yeah. She's so scary. But they rely on the same scare almost every single time. And it oh. just gets old. Like, yeah. It's just lure character into creepy room, 
the room, like some aspect of the room will change to kind of look like the nun is standing there. And then mm-hmm. suddenly she'll like pop out and it's unexpected. Like it was just the same type of scare over and over again. And it got really old. So, yeah, that's too bad. And the, the plot wasn't just wasn't that compelling. It was basically just kind of a rinse and repeat of the sure. first one. Felt a bit, a bit rerun esque. Sure. So, yeah, I can't say I enjoyed the nun too. I didn't enjoy none too much. (laughs) (laughs) Um, Okay, so my next one is actually a documentary. Every once in a while I'll watch these scary... They're scary because they're real documentaries. Um, So stereotypical of you? I guess. A white woman in her 30s watching a a scary (laughs) documentary? sure. (laughs) So this is called Till Murder Do Us Part... Yep. Soaring versus Hasten. Have you heard of this? No, but it's, it's a, is it a murder documentary? Yeah. Yeah. Um, you're, it's the stereo. This is the stereotype. No, I know. I, I know. No, keep going. But I'm not. I. It's not all I the time. It. I love this for you. I know. I don't. I really I'm don't. I'm not judging you. <laughs> I'm judging me a little bit. I. It's okay. not that I like. I obviously have some morbid curiosity about it, but it mm-hmm. almost always leaves me feeling like really. Yeah. Gross. R- gross. Um, but so this one's about, uh, this girl and her boyfriend potentially murdering her parents, but it's like, mm, they've, okay. they're both arguing that the other person did it and there's evidence both ways. And I think that the, like the girl is still, I think she's still in prison okay. and, um, the boyfriend was actually a German native that was here because his father was a diplomat and um he got extradited back to germany and so they have very different life sentencing than they do in the u.s so he's out um but he uh i think i think the the truth probably is somewhere in the that they both did it Mm -hmm. um and that it wasn't just one of them is my guess. But fascinating. Anyway, it was fascinating. It was sad. Yeah. So, anyway. The rest gotcha. of mine are much lighter. Okay. So, my next... Should I do my next two? Because that's my last scary ones. Sure. Um. So, we watched The Barbarian, which is a Never scary movie. Okay. Um. It's recent um it was probably the best of those last few that i said in terms of scary movies i think it was probably the best one okay um it made me feel moments of actual like fear (laughs) and anxiety um it really triggered like the basement anxiety of like not liking basements (laughs) uh okay i will not be watching this movie uh uh, yeah so uh it was it was more well done than the others. It still wasn't like my favorite scary movie ever, but it was it was better. Okay. It was a better scary movie. Okay. Um, and then we watched Poltergeist. Oh. Which is a classic scary movie. It is. Which I have never seen, but Hope had seen. Okay. Uh, it was just it was just kind of odd. <laughs> okay. Um. Like the uh, the effects. And like the child acting, like the time, the time that it was set, it was just, it was an odd experience. I don't know. Um, I didn't find it that scary. I I understand how you would find it scary if you're watching it as a kid, Mm -hmm. but uh, I didn't really find it super scary. Okay. You've also seen Supernatural, which I feel like pulls heavily from Poltergeist, at least in the early couple of seasons. Okay. I've not seen Poltergeist, but like they deal with Poltergeist a lot, right? Yeah, the So do you feel like having seen Supernatural it like primed you for this to not be as scary? Supernatural was definitely scarier. Okay. Than Poltergeist. Poltergeist almost is almost in the realm of like goosebumps, you know, like uh, okay. that ty- that type of scary. Gotcha. It 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 I didn't find that it 
it wasn't like uh, The Conjuring. It wasn't that mm. type of scary. It was mm. more like Goosebumps scary, or maybe somewhere in that in between in that spectrum. Um, so it was a little goofier. It had some goofier moments. Gotcha. Um, but it wasn't like all the way down to Ghostbusters. Like, you gotcha. know, that's just a comedy. Yeah, yeah. It wasn't there. Gotcha. It was still trying to be scary, but not as, you know, seriously as some that's fair. things. Yeah, for sure. Um, but yeah, that's all my... That's all my spooky stuff. Okay. Are you... Is the rest of your stuff anime then? Well, the next two are, and the last one is just one that I say every time. Oh, and I'm not even talking about, I guess, the ones that we're currently... Okay. Anyway. Um, yeah. So I'll do, I'll do my two that go together. So the Great British Baking Show... The new cool. season is airing, and it's very mm-hmm. good, and I really like Tasha. If you're watching, you know, but Tasha's okay. great. And um, there was also a new season of Junior Baking Show, but it's all out. Like, I don't know if they drop that show all at once or if they do it by episodes like they do the main show. I don't know, mm-hmm. but I've been working through the kids, the kids' version, which has also been really fun. I'm always amazed by how much food coloring these kids get on their hands and then somehow the next day they come back with not purple hands movie magic i mean some of them like i know that they'll say like oh tomorrow but i think it's actually i guess i don't know what the kids if they do like the filming schedule closer so that they can go back home sooner but because that would be a long time to have kids be away from home but even if it's a week some of the, like, they'll be trying to dye something black and their hands by the end of the episode will be dark purple or blue mm-hmm. because of the black food coloring. And somehow the next day their hands are mostly hand colored again. I mean, I don't know if that's so much, I say movie magic. I'm not saying that it's one thing or another. Like maybe it is a, a tricky scheduling thing where like they weren't actually filmed on the very mm-hmm. next day mm-hmm. or maybe like the makeup department had some tricks up oh, their maybe. sleeves, you know, maybe. it's very funny um, though. because I'm sure they all had to go through makeup to be on TV. You know, it's, I um, mean, it's the great British baking show. I don't think that they do a ton of, I really don't. They, they look maybe pretty not a ton. Joe Schmo and their kids. So they get real messy. Oh, I forgot. I forgot. It's the British baking show. It's not like master. It's show not, or something. No, no, no. Okay. It's, it's like, the Great British Baking Show. It's not American cooking shows. It's British cooking no. shows. So it is. It's better. <laughs> <laughs> um, so anyway, cool. been enjoying that a lot. Cool. Um, my turn now. Okay. Mm-hmm. So, the Attack on Titan series finale. Wait. Like the, the it's, end. The it's end. It's over. <gasps> I haven't seen. I didn't know that. I didn't know it was out. It's been less than a week, probably. Um, because it was the next, because it's only been out long enough to where like, it would have been one that I mentioned on our next episode of recording. Um, because I could okay. have mentioned it. Okay. Well, well, don't say too much because I want to watch it. I won't. I will just say the end credits killed me and it was great and just bittersweet. And I'm so sad that the show's over. Um, but I'm Is happy it... for the characters that it's over. <laughs> Yeah. Is it a satisfying ending? Like, do you feel like... I think... um, I'm not saying good, like, happy or sad, but, like, satisfying. Like, you feel like it's over. I... uh, (laughs) Okay. I feel like... I feel like... I know it's kind of a trick question. (laughs) I will say, I feel like the plot points... The -hmm. plot points were all resolved, I think. Nice. Like, it felt like a satisfying ending to to the story yes okay okay that's all i want don't tell me anything else i won't um you have to watch it (laughs) i absolutely will i'm probably going to watch that tonight (laughs) yes and then do i have time not really but i'm gonna make time yep cool (laughs) um and oh am i your turn do you want to go let me do my next one because it's not i didn't even have my anime on the list Okay. Because we've mostly been talking about this as we go. Okay. Um, but <laughs> um, Blake really likes adult animation, like American Dad and whatever. Okay. Not my not my fave. Yeah. Uh, but he grew up watching them, so like I totally understand. Um, but he really wanted me to watch some Futurama with him. So we've been watching Futurama, okay. and it's very funny. 
I've heard really good things about Futurama, actually. Like, yeah. I laugh so much. <laughs> really? <laughs> and I was not expecting that. Like, out good. loud, laugh. I'm sure he, I'm sure he likes seeing you laugh at the show. And it's, I'm sure. you know, I'm sure. when you're showing someone something that you think is really funny and then they don't laugh, it's like, oh. <laughs> so I'm it's, sure he um, appreciates that you laugh. Yeah, I feel bad because the last couple of times we've tried to watch an episode, I've for sure fallen asleep. But it was not because the episode was boring. It was because I was exhausted. Right. And I'm like, I'm so sorry. I didn't mean to fall mm-hmm. asleep. Um, mm-hmm. But it's, but like genuinely the first night we watched a couple episodes i was like okay can we do another one like we i think we probably watched four or five episodes in one go because it was so funny um and i will say fry the main character kind of the man babies trope (laughs) um yeah but he gets a pass because he was a 20 year old that got frozen and sent into the future that's funny so oh man he's a little stunted and I think maybe a little freezer burned in gotcha. the noggin. Um, but it's very funny. Very, nice. very funny. And it's on Hulu. Very good. In case you're wondering. Um, cool. So for my next one, it's... Uh, well, I'll just say we're both watching Tokyo Ghoul mm-hmm. because that's just what we're watching right now mm-hmm. for Anime Night. Uh, we're almost done. We're going to finish it probably the next time we watch. Mm-hmm. So um, that's been good. But I have been also uh, trying to catch up on Jujutsu Kaisen because uh-huh. that's been releasing right now. Um, Spy Family is also releasing right now. Oh, yeah. I forgot to put that on my list. And yeah. I'm also behind on that. I'm like an episode behind on that. I need to catch up. But yeah. I will say dating is so wonderful, but it also means I don't have a, as much time to watch all my shows, which is a fine. bit of a time like, suck. It's yeah. okay. Like I'm fine giving up some of my shows, honestly. Yes. Um, yeah. But still trying to find the balance and also like mm-hmm. the new job and grad school, grad school. It's just a lot, but it's a lot. All good things. All really wonderful things mm-hmm. would not change it for sure. But yes, yeah, by family, I'm behind. <laughs> yeah. Also so behind on critical role. That was my that was my next one was Critical Role. Yeah. Um, I'm in the process of watching the last one that aired because I fell asleep like an hour in. So <laughs> I'm like I'm like three I'm like a month behind. Dang. I know. And I know some crazy stuff happened in this last one, and so I yeah. gotta get caught up. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. And I also missed the second half of the Mighty Nine reunion, so I need to watch that too. Oh, okay. Yep. Well, that's that's all my watching stuff. Nice. Well, cool. So should we should we quickly wrap this up and do our reading? Yeah, and I've only got like three other things. So okay. here, I'll just barrel through the rest of mine. Okay. <laughs> and then you can do yours. So for reading, I've just been reading the fifth season, which is our read along book. Yeah. Um, it's very, 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 very good. It's yes. very well done. Yes. I, I I was just editing that episode before recording mm-hmm. the last episode we did, and I loved your description of being both disturbed and engaged. Mm-hmm. That's <laughs> it's very accurate. Such a perfect description. Um, but that's been very good. Playing Baldur's Gate three, I am approaching the end. Uh, nice. It's been great. Um, Hope is like at the end. She's like at the end fight. So I've been watching her do that and <laughs> struggle and die repeatedly. And it's been very entertaining for me. Uh, and also just playing regular old D&D. Nice. Um, we're all still alive. The dragon egg's still alive. Nice. That's all I really care about. No, I'm kidding. Yep. Yep. <laughs> I did prevent I did prevent us from having to like slaughter an entire village of people. Good job. Um, through... Diplomacy and talking. Nice. nice. Good job. Had to do my, you know, I had to do the stereotypical cleric thing mm-hmm. and, and prevent. Get your Caduceus Clay going. Oh my goodness. I had to let cooler heads prevail there for a moment. But yeah, so that's been, that's been that. So that's all my stuff. Nice. Here we go. Um, Hit me with it. Okay. So for reading, I've been reading the fifth season, just mm-hmm. like you. So good. Um, also finishing up the second Hank Green book, 
which I think hmm. is an absolutely remarkable thing. I think. Whatever. I'll have, the right. cor- I'll have the correct one in the description. Um, I was listening to it, and then um, and I l- was listening to it on my commute to and from work, which is like almost an hour now. Mm-hmm. Both ways. And I was so close to being done. And then had some stuff come up where I had to work from home, so I wasn't commuting. And this weekend I went to finish the book, and it had checked itself back into the library. So I'm on oh. hold. I'm on hold again for the last Dang. hour. <laughs> gotcha. Which is so annoying. Yeah. Um, but it's totally fine. Uh, and it's it's really really good. Mm-hmm. Like Joseph, you need to read these books. Okay. Okay. You will thoroughly enjoy them. Um, and I think that's all for reading right now. Fair. Um. And then playing nothing. I thought about playing Ori in the Blind Forest, and then I didn't. So Fair. That's fair. I'm prepping for Christmas now. Mm. Mm-hmm. And getting all my shopping done. Oh, I need to do that. Um, yep. Also, my TikTok has decided to show me the lady that is tunneling under her house in the suburbs. Have you seen any of these videos? Yeah. No. She she is um mining for building stone, which I assumed that we always cut stone to make them rectangular or square, but apparently not. I mean, I think you can do that, but she's like pulling rocks out of the ground. And she's like developing a a whole it's a whole deal. It's it's so bizarre that I'm like having dreams about it. This is just kind of triggering me after my having yeah. to remember the barbarian. Sorry. Um, it's I, like the like eel pit guy. More more fear of basements. You know, this lady's tunneling under her basement. Yeah. Uh. She like knocked out one of the cinder block walls and then started digging down. And she rents out. She, you know, you have to get like big dumpsters. And she rents out dumpsters and fills them with rubble. Rock. And then she saves the building stones. And now she's building... I think she's wanting to... I, I don't think this was the original plan. But she's she's currently like building a facade for her house to look like a castle on the outside. Like, that's and really cool. And she's like developed this whole like ramp system where she... And she's like built a cart to like move things up and down. Because she was originally just like hauling it up and down. And she's like 20 feet underground now. And so she's also putting up like supports and it's, it's bonkers. It is. What a psycho. Like I, (laughs) what is wrong with this woman? I think, I don't know. I don't know what she does for, this is, this is just extracurricular. Like she has a day job and then at night she goes down in mines under her house. (laughs) They yearn for the mines. (laughs) It's so maybe yeah I don't know. Oh it's, man, dude, go play Minecraft. What are you doing? Right? It is like live, like real life Minecraft. Dude, you hire. That's one of those things where it's not worth it. To, you just hire that out. Well, I'm also concerned oh, about safety, man. like because she's you're gonna die in a cave in, dude. Well, you're not yeah, a professional. Or like cause a sinkhole in her neighborhood. Yeah, like you're tunneling under your neighbor. Yeah. Like, Dude. It's creepy. It's weird. That's freaky. She's very calm and like she's fascinating. And she's usually like wearing a like a, a dress and a pearl necklace and red lipstick and a hard hat. Anyway. So, that's all that's the roundup. The <laughs> the roundup of all the watchings. Mhm. Um lovely. Great stuff. So we'll expand more on some of, like, the, the Ahsoka show. We'll do its own episode for. Mm-hmm. Maybe um, Loki. Yeah, once you watch Loki. Mm-hmm. Oh, yeah, for sure. All right. Well, next week will be another read-along for the fifth mm-hmm. season. So mm-hmm. make sure you're all caught up with that. The reading schedule is posted on our socials for that if you're not sure what to read. Um, go check that out. And once again, if you want voting rights for the next book, go check out the Patreon, all that good stuff. But, yeah. I guess uh, until next time, happy reading. And we'll talk to you next time. 
Later.